Yeah, so I will uh, give a few words on uh, post-quantum cryptography, and it's an area that we are doing some research on. So uh, let's start with uh, cryptography. So how do we view the area of cryptography? So uh, <clears throat> we may uh, describe it as being uh, uh, a set of cryptographic primitives by which we mean uh, like black box descriptions that have predefined input, output, and being some kind of algorithm that performs something that we would like to, to, to have. Uh, so for example, uh, a basic uh, symmetric encryption, for example. Uh, it's usually mathematically oriented, so uh, it's about doing uh, analysis of different kinds to uh, check what kind of security these algorithms can offer. Sometimes they are connected to different difficult problems like factoring or discrete log. And essentially all secure systems use these kind of building blocks uh, as, as uh, part of their system. So it's very, very important uh, things to study because, uh, well, if these building blocks uh, will not uh, make the job, then the system will also fail. So um, cryptographic primitives, you probably know. So uh, like a symmetric uh, encryption I mentioned, uh, it's a symmetric uh, scheme, being a, a scheme that shares the same key between sender and receiver. Uh, we have like cryptographic hash functions that do not have a key at all. And we have public key encryption digital signatures that are asymmetric schemes. So we have different keys between sender and receiver. So uh, for example, um, asymmetric crypto is now very much built on uh, connecting to problems like factoring or discrete log. So if you think that you are not using these things, uh, then you have to think again, because uh, this is something that is used every, every day in different uh, applications. So for example, if you are using HTTPS for uh, sharing some information with a website, you can actually go to your browser, you can look at what different uh, cryptographic algorithms are used. And you can see here, for example, the a possible cipher suit, and it gives various different uh, uh, cryptographic algorithms in forms of standards that uh, is currently in use. You can see, for example, ECDSA, so being an elliptic curve version of a digital signature. Um, so, but uh, we have a problem because some years ago, uh, physicists came up with this idea that you can do uh, quantum computers, and uh, <coughs> it was shown long ago that quantum computers theoretically can break uh, <coughs> cryptographic schemes because it can, in say polynomial time, uh, solve the factoring problem and also the discrete log problem. So, but the uh, most pub public key crypto that we have today are actually based on those problems. So theoretically, this could be a huge problem and it could uh, cause tremendous uh, uh, difficulties in uh, switching to, to uh, new algorithms. So we need to, to look into this problem and that's what we have been doing for a number of times. Uh, we can note that uh, for symmetric primitives, so the problem is not as severe. There is an algorithm called Grover's algorithm, but uh, basically with uh, just choosing uh, longer keys, we can get rid of problems from quantum computers. But um, <coughs> um, for public key, it's still uh, a disaster. So. Uh, so we need to, to look into it now, and we should also note that because we need to keep uh, data 
secure for maybe many years. So what we may uh, protect today might need to be uh, still uh, protected and secret also 20, 30, 40 years ahead in time. So it's really urgent to look into this uh, uh, problem. So we need ha to have new cryptographic solutions based on other problems that are not factoring and discrete log. And this is the area of post-quantum cryptography. So we are assuming we have these uh, big quantum computers that can, can solve certain problems, and then what can we do in crypto? So uh, one uh, important aspect in this development is that NIST, for some years ago, uh, announced a big standardization pro pro uh, project, and we are just, say, in the middle of this. NIST announced uh, recently the first selected uh, candidates for standardization, but it still continues with uh, new, new uh, uh, processes of finding uh, more of these uh, new standards. So, so what new problems are we looking at when uh, we are looking in this post-quantum area? So there is the main problems, so uh, one is uh, lattice-based crypto, so basically it builds on difficult problems in lattices, so a lattice being like looking at uh, integer combinations of different vectors. Another one is code-based cryptography, so this is based on difficult problems in decoding uh, general codes. And there are also other possible areas where you can find these difficult problems. One more minute, please. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the kind of things that we are looking into at, at, in, at Lund University uh, in our uh, crypto research. So typically we, we uh, look at, for example, uh, these candidates and selected candidates of this NIST standardization process. How good are they, really? And can we uh, try to find better attacks than what is known? Uh, we are looking into the general hardness of these problems and uh, looking into how do we implement these things, so in software, for example, and how do we protect against various side-channel attacks, uh, things that we already heard about today, and also uh, like power analysis attacks and things like that. So that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> There's a question from our audience. Um, pure cryptographic approaches versus AI-based security solutions. What do you think will dominate in the future? Well, I guess they have to be combined. So, uh, so uh, I think we, we can have a use of AI-based uh, uh, ideas in cryptography, but we also need to protect uh, uh, like different AI algorithms uh, uh, using cryptography. And I'm wondering how far are quantum computers um, from cracking the uh, asymmetric uh, cryptogra cryptography that we yeah. use today? In re I really want to ask you, how urgent is the situation? Well, I, this is, this is uh, <laughs> something under debate. Uh, so most cryptographers, I think, would say that it's far away. Uh, and maybe some say that it's, it's more or less impossible. Uh, and what do you say? But, but yeah, I would say uh, if, we, if we wait uh, 30 or 50 years, then maybe we can hope for something that, that uh, can actually do something. But uh, it's still v very unclear. But, uh, unclear, but very urgent. Uh, it's still urgent because we need to have solutions today to protect things. Because uh, if you d encrypt something today, if you protect something, so in 20, 30 years, we just need to know that no one can, can uh, uh, break it then. Thank you, uh, Thomas, for being here today and sharing. Thank Thanks. you.